launch coasters, wooden coasters, and giant discoveries. I'm Roller Coaster David, and this is Coasting Into Tusenford. So I've just ridden my 900 coaster, which is this one. Tusenford. After some amazing night rides on Valkyria in Leesburg the previous evening, I caught a very early bus from Gothenburg north all the way up into Norway, and after several hours, arrived in the capital city, Oslo. After checking into my hotel, I jumped on yet another bus and headed straight to Tusenfrid, a park that I'd never been to before and was very excited to be visiting. The entrance to the park looked great, with Speed Monster looping all around it. I'd actually wanted to visit this park for a long time, as it's one of the largest parks in Europe I still hadn't been to. Tusenfrid contains six roller coasters, and for my first visit, I had a bit of a game plan. My coaster count when I arrived was 895, and as with all my milestone coasters, I wanted number 900 to be something special. The coaster I chose for that milestone would be Speed Monster, although that would mean leaving it until last, a potentially risky strategy, but with that in mind, I made my way into the park. On entering the park, you actually go up an escalator that takes you through the Norwegian loop of Speed Monster as it races over and under you. It's certainly one of the most unique entrances of any park I've been to, and it's a great way to build excitement and set the mood when you first arrive at the park. The first coaster I'd be riding would be Thunder Coaster, a Vacoma wooden coaster that received updated Timberliner trains in 2015. So just had my first ride on Thunder Coaster, which is quite good fun. I didn't know much about it at all other than the fact that it had the Timberliner trains. It turns out it's kind of like a train coaster. Uh, but not like other train coasters and it actually goes quite high above the ground but it still uses the train to its advantage to have bigger drops. It has a good pace to it. I thought it was a little bit on the rough side though but that could just be being spoiled after doing Boulder yesterday which is really smooth for a wooden coaster. The ride starts with a spiral drop to the left before it takes you over a big airtime hill and into a fantastic second drop. I think this drop is actually larger than the first, as it dives down the train the coaster is built on and takes you thundering into a tunnel at the ride's top speed of over 57 miles per hour. After the tunnel, the rest of the ride has some sweeping curves and plenty more airtime hills, giving a total of 12 airtime moments. It does keep a good pace throughout the 950 metre long track and definitely uses the surrounding train to its advantage, maintaining its speed nicely and reminding me a bit of Thunderbolt at Kennywood. I rode this coaster quite a lot during my visit, and the roughness I noticed on my first ride really wasn't that bad. The Timberliner trains give a fairly comfortable ride despite their bulky lap bars, and the coaster track seems to have been well taken care of. After several more rides, I made my way to the next section of the park, which had a Viking theme. This section has three major attractions, a Max Super Splash, a Rapids ride called Ragnarok, and a Dark ride called Thor's Hammer. Despite the less than summery temperatures, I decided to brave the water rides, which thankfully didn't get you too wet. First up was Ragnarok. So I've been quite pleasantly surprised by the Raptors ride here. It's really well themed, and you don't get too wet either, because the boats are quite high sides. Overall, the level of theming was pretty good. While some of it had a bit of a plasticky feel to it, and felt a little out of place, it was clear that effort had gone into some of the buildings and rock work surrounding the ride. Having recently played God of War on PlayStation, I did actually recognise some of the characters in the ride too. There's one rather cool bit where actually swallowed by Jormungandr, the world serpent. You go down into this big whirlpool and then go into this sort of monster's mouth. It's kind of cool. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible to film the best parts of the ride, but the area did have some nice views of the Super Splash. Strangely though, the ride didn't have any sort of Viking name, despite the theming on the station and the boats. Instead, it goes by the generic name of Super Splash. The Super Splash also doesn't seem to get you particularly wet, which is kind of nice when it's not like scorching hot, like today. The park actually seems quite a bit quieter, especially compared to Leesburg yesterday. That's quite nice, there's not much weird views. Next up would be the 4D dark ride called Thor's Hammer. So I was actually quite impressed by Thor's Hammer. It's a 3D dark ride, but it's, it's very well done. It's almost like they're trying to do something along the lines of Universal Studios sort of style ride. Uh, obviously with not quite the same budget, so the special effects aren't quite up there. The theming's really, really nice, and it's got a bit of a story to it. But I didn't really understand because I don't speak any Norwegian. Leaving the Viking area behind, I went on to the family coaster, Western Express, which also ran in a VR mode. I also passed by De Vergebanen, which the park claims is the world's smallest roller coaster. At the top of the park, there was also a shot tower, which gave a nice view of the surrounding area from the top. 
Nearby was also Tusenfred's best flat ride, the giant discovery called Spin Spider. When it opened in 2009, it actually jointly held the record as the tallest ride of its kind in the world, a record it kept until the opening of Crazanity at Magic Mountain in 2018. The ride's themed to a giant spider with red eyes and fangs at the top, and it's actually quite forceful too. It's got strong positive G's at the bottom, and there's loads of floater air on the upswings too. It was great fun. Probably the strangest thing they have in the park though is Eventrystein. It's a kind of walkthrough or obstacle course with some really quite strange trolls in it. Some of them looked rather disturbing. So after escaping this weirdness, I went on to ride another of the park's coasters, Lupin, a Vacoma Tornado. This was unsurprisingly a bit on the rough side, being a rather compact coaster squeezing in both a loop and a corkscrew, but it does help to add a bit of variety to the park's coasters. It's also a fairly rare model too, as there's only two other coasters with the same layout in the world. Lupin would be my 899th coaster, so that meant it was now time for number 900, Speed Monster. The coaster starts with a launch from 0 to over 55 miles an hour in just 2.2 seconds, which whilst it might not be the strongest launch I've experienced, still has quite a kick to it. Straight after the launch you go into the ride's signature element, a Norwegian loop that's like a back-to-back -back dive loop in Immelman. This element is quite surprisingly forceful, with some really strong positive g-force at the bottom of the loop. The rest of the ride has several swooping, high-speed curves through the trees, some airtime hills, and it finishes with a corkscrew right before you turn back into the station. I really enjoyed this ride, it had a good launch, felt fast throughout the ride, and had some really fun airtime too. With that, it was time to get back on the bus to Oslo, enjoying more of the Norwegian scenery on the way. Overall, I had a great time at Tusenfred. The park may have a bit of weirdness to it, but has a decent mix of coasters for its size, and Speed Monster is a fantastic unique coaster. The next day, I'd do some touristy things in Oslo prior to flying to Hamburg to continue my trip visiting Heide Park and Hansa Park. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at Tusenfred. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Rollercoaster David, and I'll see you again in another video very soon.